<laughs> we'll turn it around. We're going to turn it right around, baby, right around. But a record player won't be invented for a while, so that's not why we're turning it around. Right. So, welcome to today's Adventures in LARPing. What are we talking about today? Hi. Well, um, today we are talking about armor. Armor is a beautiful thing and one of my absolute favorite subjects. Um, now, before we get too far into it, I do want to tell you a couple of things. Number one, before you go out and put all of your uh, effort and money into getting some armor or making some armor, check with your local group about the armor rules in play. Some yes. groups don't even allow armor. Groups like IFGS, mm -hmm. instead of armor, you have a little square of cloth on the front. My mom's part of IFGS, yeah. I'm totally Which is kind of silly. <laughs> IFGS but, is the lightest form of LARPing. We'll just... And then some other groups like Dagger here, uh, you're able to wear armor, but you can't wear metal elbows or knees because they have grappling. Oh. The other thing, the other reason to check with your local group is, if you're playing a particular character, or you're playing a particular class or that sort of thing, uh, some, there's some armor that you can or cannot use. Mm -hmm. Wizards wouldn't be seen in plate in a lot of places, yeah. not all. So before you go out and find yourself some nice plate armor, double check and make sure that uh, uh, you're going to be able to use it. Because if you can't use it once you just get it out there, what fun is that? Well, now, another point with this that I want to bring up is we're talking about fighting armor as opposed to display armor. If yes. you just want to get out there and dress up for funsies, which lots and lots of us do. We've, some of us have been to Penzik, which is a great place to dress up for funsies as well as a great place to fight. You can have two different sets of armor if you want. You can have your decorative armor. It's like, yes, I am king of the universe. Admire me. You can have your Lannister armor, shall we call it. And then oh. you can have your getting down and dirty fighting armor. And that's Darn what he's straight. talking about today. That's, that's, that's right. It's a good point. We are talking talking about the stuff that you want to get hit in, or the stuff that, you know, you're going to get hit in. Um, so what do we got in front of us? So we've got a variety of things in front of us, and I'm going to talk about a couple of the extremes first, and then we'll get into some more of the funner stuff in the middle. All right, go extreme on me. All right, so at the lighter end, we've got some leather, all right? This is uh, universal just about every LARP. If you can wear armor, you can wear leather. The nice thing is that it's real easy to put together. It's real easy to create yourself. You get a big piece of cow, you cut it up, you strap it on. You can get it really nice and decorated if you get some tooling and all of that sort of thing into it. Um, now, the other thing is, especially in Texas, it's hot. Yes. It's leather. Yes. It's thick. You can't just get away with the, the kind of leather you find on somebody's purse, mm -hmm. take it apart, turn it into armor. You've got to get some stuff. I tell you, from practically just from having this on right now, I mean, granted, this is, these are not made for my size, but I can barely bend my wrists. You want to be really careful to make sure that you get something properly sized for you. Very because much that's so. going to have a serious impact on your fighting ability. Very and much most, so. I'm going to be able to just <laughs> flail ineffectually at him while looking like Wonder Woman. And that's <laughs> not quite what we're going for here. Right. But the... And the other thing with leather is that getting the side of cow can cost you a little bit of money. Uh, so you definitely Go in don't want to mess up. And buy a lot of cow. You want to be real careful on your patterns and do your best not to, to cut the wrong thing because then you'll be sad. But uh, the, the nice thing is it's, it's real easy to produce. Y you can even, in some cases, stitch it together on certain uh, uh, sewing machines and things like that. Now, to the other end of the extreme, we've got plate. This I'm not is, putting it on. We're not going to put it on. <laughs> But th this is solid plates of steel in this case. Um, generally, steel is used, uh, or, or varieties of it. It's nice, it's solid, it, it's inflexible. So when you want to do things like move your arm, you've got to put rivet it in certain ways so that here, we're not. Yeah. We're just going to test it. Oh, look, <laughs> look, it's on. But this sort of thing with the rivets in here allows you to be able to take this solid piece of metal and move it around your arm, which is really cool. It's also potentially really dangerous because as he said, with different groups not allowing you to do things, if I butt him with this pretty hard, I could actually send him to the ER. In some cases that is possible. Now, the, the things that you want to know about the plate is, number one, wear something under it. Even if you have it all perfectly sized to yourself, all of the corners nice and filed down and everything like that, it is going to bite into you here and there in different places. Um, one thing to keep in mind, he actually has 
a little bonnet on underneath his chainmail here. You should wear something under all I of your armor. I have a bonnet under my mail. <laughs> because otherwise, it's just going to hurt. Um, you're going to, it's going to pinch. It's going to dig into your skin. You're going to end up with welts. I have looked very terrible after coming home borrowing other people's armor because I was like, no, I just don't want to keep my pretty clothes underneath. And it was, it was As a, a disaster. Tip. As a tip, if you're wearing something under it, wear all natural fibers. Yes. Even in Texas, I can wear a full suit of plate on top of padded linen. Because it's padded linen and co cotton, it's 100% natural fibers. I can wear it outside in the sun all day long, and I will be just fine. Leather won't let you do that. No. All right. Now, some of the downside on, on steel is that it, it's, it is cheap mm -hmm. to purchase steel. Um, is it cheaper than leather? It is cheaper than leather for the most part. Okay. The nice thing is, if you're starting to work on a piece of steel, and for some reason it's not quite coming out the way that you wanted it to, it's steel. Yeah. You can kind of shape it the other direction, yeah. or you just stop, toss a piece, cut out another piece of steel, and keep on going. Yeah. It, is, it is cheaper. The downside is, it does take a little while to produce things, mm -hmm. even if you know what you're doing. <clears throat> um, and it does take a little bit of time to learn what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, it does take some specialty materials. You can't just take a hammer off of the, uh, you know, can't go down to the hardware store, grab up a hammer yeah. and start smacking on things uh, without grinding down the face yeah. of it and getting it exactly what you want first. And even then, it, it does take a variety of hammers to do some of the things. I think, I think my workshop at home, I just got one of the small workshops and I've got 20, 25 hammers. Yeah. So, so moving along from plates, we gotta we gotta get yes, to some more. Yes, we are getting to the better stuff. To, yes. So, between these two are my absolute favorite things in armor that can go with all sorts of stuff. We're gonna actually start with this one. This is called a coat of plates. On the inside, it's a whole bunch of plates. There's almost no shaping. It's just a little bit of of curving it around, poking some holes. On the outside. It's nice and pretty. These can, this sort of armor can be done um, in poncho sorts of style. This one's in a coat sort of a style. It gives you the benefit of some of this style stuff, but it's way easier. It's way easier to wear. It's easier to maintain, and it can look pretty because you can, when you're sewing your stuff, you can sew all kinds of neat looking stuff, and then you've just got the patterns of the rivet heads on top, and works out works out real well. I feel like you could also, if you're doing um, some other types of costuming, cover this up with something black and just put an FBI on the middle of it and have a really good faking your way through something. Yes, you know? yes, yes, you could. Now, I will also say, it's good that you put this on because one note is that when you have, uh, so armor traditionally was made for guys. Let's face it. <laughs> That's just kind of how it works. We're flat. Well, I'm kind of round. Women are not like that. And so, there's where it is if I actually pull in a little bit. And so, with certain types of armor like leather, you can do stitching around that sort of thing to fit better. With plates, sometimes you can form it a little better to be able to fit. This is one of the types of armors that's beautiful for women to wear because it's, it, because <laughs> it's it will protect you without bunching where it shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And it does look right without giving the, the odd fantasy costuming of saying, hey, look other than my eyes. Yeah, that's not really going to appeal to anybody. So this, this is one of my favorite types of armor. Now, it does still take a little bit. you got to have a couple of hammers and things like that to put it together, sewing machine and all that, which comes to my absolute favorite kind of armor, mail. Now, Various games, we'll talk about chain mail, scale mail, plate mail, but here, you have learned something today. If you take away nothing else, this is mail. This is the only thing that's mail. If someone says plate mail, point at them and laugh, and then tell them about fan service TV because they're obviously not <laughs> watching. This is mail. Mail is a whole bunch of little tiny steel rings woven together. Or as I like to call it, knitting for boys. <laughs> it's. The reason I like it is that it's, it works in any fantasy genres. It works in post-apocalyptic genres. It works across the board. It works as little bits, little sleeves. It works as full shirts. It's real easy to produce. Um, it, it takes two pairs of needle nose pliers and time. Yeah. When you're sitting at home, watching your TV, watching the new sci-fi channels, bring out your mail, start weaving, 
the next thing you know, you'll have a shirt in no time. If you go to just about any fantasy event, you're going to see people constantly making some mail. Because again, it, it's very much the equivalent of knitting as far as being able to just do something mindless and repetitive and while your mind is able you to can engage put in all sorts stuff. of And you can put all sorts of patterns in. Mm -hmm. So the thing I'm seeing, I've got on today, you can see all the little glittery stuff. I've got little bits of plate woven in. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of little patterns here. I've even got some non-steel, some little brass wire woven through it. It's real easy to make all this stuff sorts of stuff. Um, it's just a little bit of time and a couple and of pairs of pliers. you can find a ton of patterns and how-to instruction guides online. Yes. Um, now, let's say you found a pattern in a how-to instruction guide online and your first thought is, you know what I need? A chainmail bikini. That's good for you, although ladies, I'm going to advise you, you do want to wear something underneath because it will pinch. Yes. What's bad, however, is if you wear that to a fighting event like what he has, you've now got a giant exposed abdomen and as soon as they stick a sword in it, you are done for the day. Hope you packed a sandwich and plenty sit on the sidelines because you wore stupid armor of your own choice. Yes, very much so. I, armor only protects what it actually protects. If it isn't there, you, you might think that you're being all spiffy and look at my little chainmail bikini, but the to the fighter, smack. Now, You're out of the way. When my younger slimmer days, I have owned more than one chainmail bikini, and they're a ton of fun. Wear them for the, the picnic portion of the event, for the non-fighting portion of the event. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't have a ton of fun with your chainmail, because you should. Um, <laughs> but if you're thinking about armor and you want to be taken seriously, I actually think that the plate mail is one of the best options for ladies. Plate. Just plate. I'm sorry. I'm well, that's okay. We'll get Sean back next week, next that's time. That's true. I think the plate's one of the best options for ladies because it balances out nicely between A, wanting to look attractive, B, actually being completely defended, and C, something that is not that, it's not as hard to make as actual plate mail there, or actual, it's not as hard to make as that. Plate armor. It's not as hard to make as plate armor. Or leather armor. It's honestly not as hard to make as this. Or you mail. can. Yeah. Um, I've seen some people, I don't know how authentic or, well, it wasn't authentic at all. I don't know how official it was that it literally cut aluminum cans in half to make these sort of things. And it depends on what game you're in, if they're going to allow that. Right. So, yeah, again, check with your game. So, next time on Adventures in LARPing, we're going to get all Martha Stewart with it. We are breaking out hot glue on your costume as decoration. Partly because Sean's not here to tell me no, and partly because I got some great ideas, and I've been playing with stuff, and I really want to show you how to do it. Bring out your glue guns and come back for the next Adventures in LARPing.